So Agile Impulse is very good in enabling you to do things in whichever field you are. And the tools are, are just working. The combination of sensors in ROM1 enables to early detect all the faults on the electrical grid. We are protecting wildlife with passion and technology. Agile Impulse is really going to, to change the way animals are being protected in the field. It's the best thing that is out there to put machine learning into an embedded system. Please welcome Edge Impulse's Chief Executive Officer and Co-Founder, Zach Shelby. I want to welcome you all to Imagine 2023. Yeah. It's our third year doing Imagine. Um, it feels like it only gets better. And the quality and the scope and the exciting use cases that we have coming here just gets better and better. So this day is here for you. Our job is to bring together the leaders in business and technology into the same place and to talk about how we're succeeding with machine learning in real winning products. And that's the theme this year. How do we put ML in the winning products? How do we do that together as an ecosystem? Three things I want you to take away from the whole day and from my talk. Number one, this is the year that we went from hype to real business in this industry. Edge AI is now off the hype cycle, which is really exciting, so we'll talk about that. Two, how this ecosystem is going about enabling the world's most advanced ML models on production-optimized hardware. That's been a big theme this year from customers. How do we put hardware into production at high volume, multi-million unit volume? What do we need to make that happen with the most advanced ML models in the world? We'll talk about that. And then finally, how the health, digital health, and industrial markets are really picking up. The two big verticals that are carrying our expansion we're gonna go deep into what customers are doing in these spaces. How are they using the technology? What's their ROI? But first, we're gonna talk about space. So space for me is really kind of the final frontier of technology. This is where a lot of our technology transfer from NASA, from SpaceX, et cetera, comes. And AI has endless applications in space. Satellite remote monitoring has things we can do in agriculture insurance, nature conservation, climate. And to help talk about this, please help me welcome Kate Callett, CEO and founder of Amini, to the stage. Welcome, Kate. And you brought a satellite with you. I did. Oh my god. <laughs> uh, please sit. Thank you. <laughs> Let me deploy this little here. All right, you were the first guest speaker that we, we have ever had that, that brought this kind of hardware to stage with her. <laughs> Amazing. Uh, welcome to Imagine with us. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks for coming. Thank you for having me. Um, we're going to talk about space, in particular, what the journey that you've taken on with Amini. Um, solving the African data scarcity problem. This is something that really opened my eyes the first time that we talked about this. Yeah. Uh, what inspired you to work on, on this and to do it from Africa? Yeah, I mean, you know, I think all of us in this room today know the importance of data for all the applications um, and the AI and machine learning world that we've seen today, right? Um, yet Africa has been victim of data scarcity for the past decades or even, even more. And that data scarcity specifically span across environmental data why environmental data? You have to know that 60% of the African population are smallholder farmers. Africa represents 65% of the world's uncultivated arable land. When you talk about food security and water scarcity, it becomes very important. It's also home to 30% of the world's natural resources. Yet, Africa is still the most data scarce continent. And that scarcity impacts businesses because when you have data, you have transparency, you have trust, you can accelerate investments and impacts policymakers, but last and not least, the people. 
the farmers are the most vulnerable to climate change. So for us, we decided that if we go about doing the hard thing and solving the data scarcity of the continent, in years, five, ten years down the line, you'll see a much different Africa than you see it today. So this sounds like this must be like immensely unique to the African problem, right? Like yeah. The way we think about building technology here in the valley has to be so far away from the reality of what you deal with. Like, how are you going about solving this problem and how are you applying AI? Yeah, so that's a great question. In the first phase, we started looking into every ounce of data we could find. So we've been using data, geospatial data from NASA, from ESA. We've been calibrating against ground truth data that we found from IoT sensors, soil studies, and um, then building and providing high quality data sets and applying machine learning onto it. Let me give you an example. We're able to understand droughts, floods across the entire continent, land use, at the farm level, for hundreds of millions of smallholder farmers, we're able to understand things such as crop health, soil health, water usage, fertilizer use. That data we collect at the farm level can be provided to an insurance provider who can design crop insurance products for those farmers. That same data is provided to a bank who can provide loans against assets to those farmers. That same data, aggregated at a country level, is provided to a government to understand food security across the entire country. But that same data is also provided to global private sector companies who have supply chain in Africa. Supply chain, agricultural supply chain, but also supply chain for minerals, which goes into the electronics that we build today, right? But then that same data goes back to the farmers in a free way via text in a way, packaged in a way they can understand to increase their productivity and their profits. And then you apply machine learning on top of this and all of a sudden you're able to forecast floods, forecast droughts in certain areas, forecast pest infestation, even forecast yields. Amazing. So I want to talk about the satellite in the <laughs> yes. room. It's an amazing piece of of tech, this thing weighs a ton. <laughs> so when she was carrying this up on stage with two arms, that wasn't a joke. Um, I've heard rumors that you're working on a satellite constellation. We are, because you know we know that uh, the quality of the data we're getting from, from open source satellite is not enough. We need better resolution, better revisits. Uh, we need higher quality of, of, of data. So we decided to take on the journey of launching Africa's first constellation of nanosatellites that will be solely dedicated to monitoring environmental data on the continent. Amazing. And Talk a little bit about the tech behind this, right? It's something interesting for me. We, we think about the, the quality of data from yes. the satellite constellations that we have today. Like, how much of a problem is that? Like, the resolution, the flyby times, the delays, the cost? Yeah. And then what does this do when you, when you launch your own satellite constellation? It's a huge problem because one of the things I, I haven't mentioned is Africa is a big continent. And if you have to do analytics, you have to do analytics at scale for, an, for a continent that represents US, Europe, China, India all combined can fit into the African continent. So it's big, right? Um, but one of the things, the interesting things we noticed when we started taking on this journey is that the exact same bottlenecks that we found and that spurred the edge AI movement on the ground are also in space. So you have issues with bandwidth, latency, cost of co cloud computing. These are the exact same bottlenecks that created this movement, right? So what we decided to do, because we have to do continuous analytics at scale, is to do edge processing in orbit. So Edge AI in space. Edge AI in space. <laughs> so in that satellite, we'll have an NVIDIA Jetson that will be processing the data that the optical sensor is collecting and providing us the results. And with that gym pulse, we can open that up to the entire world of developers. Absolutely. Amazing. Thank you, Kate. We're going to talk Zach. more about NVIDIA and how this technology is making its way into all kinds of products. Um, thanks for joining me here Thank you at for Imagine. Having me. Enjoy the show. Thank you. <laughs> I'll let you leave you the satellite. You'll be able to check out the satellite later, uh, but we're going to put it over here now and hope it doesn't tip over this table. There we go. So space is exciting, but actually there's something that I'm even more excited about. 
and that's that edge AI is finally boring. And that sounds a little bit strange, right? Like, we were really excited eight years ago when Jan and I started working on machine learning for embedded systems. We did the first open source project to try to bring machine learning models into Cortex-M and Cortex-A parts in a scalable way that normal developers could, could achieve. Um, and that started our exciting journey, right? And we've been in a kind of hype cycle since then, right? Growing and growing and growing hype about what AI can do, what can it do in the edge? And finally, this year's Gartner hype cycle, something magical happened. We dropped off of the hype peak, right? So for the first time, generative AI took over the peak of hype in AI. Edge AI is no longer anywhere on that, that side. Um, and that's exciting because what happens in this as a, as a, as a founder and um, entrepreneur is that that hype cycle is really useful for raising VC, right? When you're on that rise, right, what your, your business as a founder is raising money, right, to develop the technology that in the future is going to generate business. What happens when you start coming down the hype cycle is that, well, now this is where the real business starts. And this is a trend that we've seen this year. Even though the market's been fairly challenging, at the same time, the quality and the scale and the ambition of Fortune 100, Fortune 200, Fortune 500 customers has blown us away. So we're at a completely new phase of this market where now the real business starts. And the interesting thing is this is only the beginning, right? Now the real opportunities start to come as more and more of the market adopts the technology and within the next five years, we believe this is going to be a must-have set of tools to work with data, develop AI solutions in all industries. So it gets really exciting from here out. I talked earlier about the two industries that we focus on, digital health and industrial productivity. What does that mean in practice, right? Well, soon we're going to talk about the amazing customer use cases that we're working on. We're going to have some great keynotes today from CEOs in the space. But for me, it's two major things in digital health that are driving this technology adoption. One is activity. So this is the detection and classification of things like human gestures, right? We worked with Aura for a long time. So things that you can wear, we can interpret how human beings are doing. Voice commands, sport activities, worker safety, fall detection. They go on wearable devices. They don't yet require medical clinical data. And then the clinical medical side that we're very big in, how do we use biosensors to create world-leading, cheaper sensor algorithms to achieve things like sleep detection, stress detection, fatigue, sickness, right, in patients? So we'll talk a lot more about these. And then on the industrial side, it's industrial productivity that's driving the adoption of AI. And it's in two major areas, right? One, monitoring machinery. So here we're using motion, sound, electrical current, all at the same time with sensor fusion to detect and optimize equipment, remote monitoring of equipment, optimization of equipment, predictive maintenance of equipment, endless applications in this. And vision. Vision's in everything, but in particular, in productivity, we're having vision applied to some of the world's most interesting production quality, production optimization, inspection, logistics, and safety monitoring. So we'll talk about vision, but in particular about low power vision today. Now, to power these industries, we need a lot more model technology. And we as an ecosystem have to provide that for the developers in these enterprises. And we're doing that together with NVIDIA. So we've been announcing some big partnerships with NVIDIA this year. We have something even bigger that we're working on now. So We've now partnered to supercharge Edge AI by bringing NVIDIA foundational models using NVIDIA Tau into Edge Impulse in production use. And what that means is that we're releasing the best in breed vision transformers, advanced object detection models, and much more that NVIDIA spends billions of dollars investing in. We're deploying those in production on Edge Impulse, which means you'll be able to click and choose that model use custom data from your own operations, train that model, and deploy it typically to something like an NVIDIA Jetson, right? That's what we'll think about when we think about NVIDIA models. But now, 
we're opening that up. And together, we're now unleashing NVIDIA models for all of the Edge ecosystem. And what that means is that we're going to be automatically adapting, optimizing, using our advanced tools for AutoML for target-aware optimization to deploy these models down to production-optimized Linux SOCs, high-end MCUs that are optimal for lower power applications. And that includes with partners like Qualcomm, TI, NXP, Renesas, Aleph, ST, Infineon, and much more in our ecosystem. So be sure to go check out demonstrations around this from our demo room when we have the break. You can talk to the people who are working on this themselves, and we're gonna hear much, much more about this. Our next speaker will be from NVIDIA, and he'll, he'll dive into this world of what's happening with these models and this technology. Today, we've also made a major announcement with IAR. So any of you that have ever worked with embedded systems know that IAR is really the leading supplier of embedded development tools and compilers used by tens of thousands of different companies and supporting over 8,000 unique ARM targets. It's a massive ecosystem. Today, Edge Impulse supports hundreds of targets, plus some generic Cortex-M C++ export. This opens us up to the entire ecosystems of devices. What this means is that we've now integrated native IAR Workbench support into Edge Impulse. You'll be able to choose IAR Workbench as a deployment option for any of our models, and we automatically generate the optimized code, the project, and the beautiful thing of this is our compiler technology together with IAR's compiler technology will get us the industry's leading efficiency in RAM and code space usage on embedded devices. And that has a big impact because when you talk about production optimized, it's that bomb cost optimization that OEMs are looking for when they get into multi-million unit volumes. So this is a big deal and we're gonna be doing a lot more together. Edge Impulse is really about bridging this world from the big AI space. We don't replace data science tools. We're not a data science tool. We're an Edge AI platform. And bridging that to the real device manufacturers, people that put devices in the field. So our job is to be optimizing between these two worlds, right? Working with AI practitioners, domain experts, device experts, and enabling them to do optimization, having a target in mind with a data set in mind that's theirs. And so to enable this integration with the big AI world, we recently announced partnerships with Weights and Biases and with Hugging Face, right? Take the best in breed and observability, best in breed models from the community, deploy those on Edge Impulse. We're now going further with this. Uh, we're announcing partnerships now with AWS. So AWS is our largest go-to-market partner. We're now part of their ISVA program. That means that you can now buy Edge Impulse as an AWS line item. We are simply one component in the whole stack that you get from AWS. We show up on the AWS spend bill month and month. This is a big deal for us, right? That means that we're out selling together with AWS to these enterprise customers. We're also integrating with Amazon SageMaker. So in addition to other Python notebook tools that you could host on EC2, we already have Python SDK integrations, we're going deeper with SageMaker to make this kind of end-to-end -end solution available on AWS with SageMaker, S3, Edge Impulse all together. And soon, we're gonna hear from YLabs. Alyssa will come and talk to us about how observability is key to deploying these big AI solutions and keeping them in production, right? What does this really take? We're gonna hear more. At the center of what we do will always be the developer. So it's good to keep in mind that Jan and I, whatever we do, we end up doing it for developers in the end. It's kind of what we care about. So our vision when we started Edge Impulse was pretty simple. If we want AI to be a tool that people working in real industries and real products can take advantage of, we're gonna have to open it up to the engineers, right? All of the engineers. And so we really win when we enable millions of developers to make use of this technology. And the cool thing is that we start to be on that path, right? Our job is to create these developers, turn them into professional Edge AI developers, and make sure that our enterprise customers have the talent that they need. So we're really matchmaking between the, the engineers and the companies that need them. And we're on that path. So at the end of this year, we're gonna pass 100,000 
developers in our ecosystem. Big milestone for us. And even more amazing, these engineers have already worked on a quarter of a million custom machine learning models on Edge Impulse. Those are all there, sitting there, waiting to be deployed, right? waiting to be modified, improved. So we have a lot of machine learning models that are now being worked on. And even cooler is that the amount of compute that we see consumed on our training side of our platform is absolutely immense. By the end of this year, our users will have generated one billion seconds worth of compute time in the cloud. On the inference side, it is orders of magnitude larger with this. We don't count that. We don't, we don't talk to our models in the field, but that's massive. But just on the training side, billion seconds of compute. And this is growing 30% quarter on quarter. So we're seeing just a massive increase hockey stick in the amount of compute, which means that, yes, we stay up at night worrying about how we get a hold of enough GPUs, just like the LLM guys, right? <laughs> GPUs are a problem for us, um, but we're, we're scaling this. Now, it's amazing what our customers are achieving. It's what we're here for. Imagine, bring our customers together and talk about how, what's working, how is it working. And in digital health, it's really amazing. This is transforming the space. And we're seeing AI become a must-have for anybody working with leading health wearables and medical devices. So this is no longer an optional piece of technology. You have to be using AI in this space. And the reason is simple. When you're building algorithms for health, you are building big clinical data sets. And what clinical data sets mean is that when we're building a health device or a medical device, what we're doing is we're approximating laboratory equipment, right? We have medical grade devices trusted by doctors. Clinical means a, a, a medical environment. Trusted by doctors, we're collecting these reference data sets together with the products of our customers, and we're building very large data sets from this. N equals one, N equals 10, N equals 100, N equals 1,000 patients in order to start getting the accuracy that we need and the validation that we need to bring a product to market. And so what we're doing is enabling this kind of distributed clinical data collection and algorithm development to get these algorithms deployed in real products. What does that take? What does it really mean when we go to this kind of scale with customers? And something that we finished earlier this year was SOC 2 Type 2 certification. So security immediately comes to mind. We're working with sensitive data. We're working with patient data. We're working with industrial machine data. We have to have the best security in the world for that. This is expected by all of our customers. So we're now SOC 2 Type 2 compliant. It's a big milestone for us. But something even cooler, we're now committing to achieving HIPAA compliance. And this is something that's already in progress. We're doing this because all of our health and medical device companies are starting to go towards the FDA, and they need HIPAA compliance in their own operations. So we will be the first HIPAA compliant Edge AI um, tool provider, something we're really proud of. And this is going to enable us to do much more in this space. Something else that's a must-have in the world of wearables and health devices is PPG and heart rate data. So something that we see repeating over and over is that we work with a customer, they have a device, it does something like collecting glucose or detecting falls in elderly patients. They also need PPG and heart rate. That's always a really important component of almost every health algorithm. So sleep requires HR, HRV, heart rate variability. Stress requires HRV. Fall detection requires heart rate. So we've now developed the best-in-class heart rate, heart rate variability algorithm to be used with PPG sensors <clears throat> across all of our customers. This is now available for deployment. And the really interesting thing is that we put a lot of R&D into making this small. So we now have the PPG HR, HRV algorithm that is 16 times smaller in RAM and has by far the smallest mean error and deviation in the market. So Jan's going to talk more about this. What does this mean in practice? But well, this is now going to our customers and getting deployed. Now, what does this achieve with real customer cases? Um, it's super exciting to see what digital health customers are achieving with AI. No Labs is on a huge mission. 
Two billion people around the world with diabetes and pre-diabetes problem. Myself, uh, two years ago, I started to develop pre-diabetes. As an athlete, sometimes um, endurance athletes also start to develop diabetes for a different reason than people that are obese. And this happened to me. So it's something very close to my heart, what No Labs is working on. People desperately need to understand their blood sugar levels, understand the glucose in their body. How does their eating habit affect the disease? Um, well, we're now working with No Labs, who's developed the world's first non-invasive glucose sensor. And they're using a bio-RF sensor technology, which enables us to look inside body tissue, use AI and a lot of clinical data to determine things like glucose concentrations in your blood. With Edge Impulse, they've been able to make this entire process faster. Data collection, algorithm development, device development, right? Speed up their time to market. Soon, we're gonna hear more from No Labs. Chief Product Officer will be up here telling how they've achieved AI in their products. We're also doing this with HIFE, the world's leader in medical cough detection. So HIFE has worked with Edge Impulse to optimize their very large, very sophisticated models. They have the world's largest cough data set. Over 3.5 million samples are now being used on our platform to use our target optimization technology to hit comparable model accuracy, but to fit this down on a Cortex M33 and just 20K of RAM, and only over 100 milliseconds of execution time, inference time. So we've hit big model medical grade cough detection now in very small devices. And we're gonna see a lot more of this in the industry. Useful sensors. We're gonna have Pete Warden, founder and CEO, hi Pete, up here talking about what they're doing in building AI intelligence into the sensors themselves. And something that I caught on was their new AI in a box solution. AI in a box is NLP and LLMs integrated in a physical box. And they're using whisper technology optimized down for this edge device to do NLP, natural language processing of human speech without the internet and with privacy. And talking with Pete, one of the big applications for this is medical transcription. So they're now starting to work with medical transcri transcription applications to bring in this highly optimized whisper and enable them to do their work much more efficiently. We'll hear soon from Pete more. Polly, now part of HP, has been wor working successfully with Edge Impulse to rapidly differentiate their capabilities in Edge AI-based user interface techniques. So we're now gonna see their innovative enterprise-grade headsets, enterprise-grade earbuds, putting AI technology into use. And even more excitingly, headsets are about to get a lot smarter thanks to brain interpreting technology with EEG. And to talk about this, please help me welcome Ramses Alked, co-founder and CEO of Neurable, up to the stage. <laughs> Together with his trusty Trusty partner. My steed, yes. My trusty steed. I'm just welcome. Thank you, thank you for having me here. You brought real hardware. Yeah, so. yeah. Uh, what you see there is actually a, a pair of headphones, but they have these silver sensors on the inside made out of fabric. And so really what our, what our company does is we're an AI company that increases signal to noise of brain data, which enables us to put brain sensors into everyday devices without having to have this like large cap system and still retain all the same level of, of fidelity. And that's been published in about eight different papers, including one in Nature. Uh, yeah. So this includes things like headsets, earbuds, glasses? Yeah, we're, we're hardware agnostic. Okay. And we work with different partners uh, across enterprise, uh, Department of Defense, in order to uh, bring out technology that can really capture a whole scale of applications um, you know, that, that have already been proven out in the brain, but in everyday devices. And so very soon you're gonna to start to see more and more wearable devices with these types of technologies inside. And what kind of use cases can we achieve? Like when I think about brain technology, I think about drilling a hole in my skull and putting in some sensors and then doing very sophisticated, I don't know, doom control, <laughs> gaming control and things like that. 
Like, what kind of applications are, are you working on? Yeah, really, there's a whole, uh, you know, spectrum of applications from, uh, for, for these brain-computer interfaces. Really, where we're starting out is in productivity and wellness for our consumer products, and then safety for a lot of our industrial and Department of Defense projects. But as the technology continues to evolve, there's other applications. We have very simple device interaction systems right now that enable you to change music tracks, for example. Mm -hmm. uh, and then long term, and we already have some biomarkers of these in-house, but all the therapeutic and clinical applications that have been done with EEG, which is the type of sensors we have here, are now doable with these types of devices. But the real thing that, that really makes it come out is, is, is the fact that we're able to retain that level of medical data using AI, right? It's a data set of close to 5,000 people that we use to then boost the signals that we pick up here and make them very reliable and robust and still scalable. Amazing. So together with Neurable, we just won a major US government contract to work on AI-powered fatigue monitoring for personnel. And I, I find this super fascinating, how we go from kind of wellness and device control into really a clinical style algorithm to think about people's safety. So wh what does this mean in practice? How are we achieving this kind of fatigue detection? Yeah, yeah, for sure. And it helps to bring a little bit of background too. Uh, we did a study with the University of Graz uh, where they compared our technology to other fatigue measuring systems, for example, eye trackers, uh, heart rate, et cetera. Uh, but the thing is, you know, when an eye tracker comes around and you start to see fatigue happening, you see the onset of fatigue as a person closes their eyes and gets tired. But really, your brain has been battling for the last hour to maintain focus and attention on the tasks you're doing. And we can actually track that focus of an individual start to go downward. And when we know that, uh, that that level of focus that they need to perform the task is starting to go below what's required, we know they're going to get into an accident. So in this Nature paper that we released with University of Graz, we were able to detect failure points 30 minutes before they actually occurred. right? And then from there, we went through a two-year validation process with the Air Force, uh, which enabled us to work across the entire DOD. Uh, and then that's where our grant came about, to actually bring this to soldiers, help them rotate out when they start to fatigue, prevent pilot accidents. About a quarter of, of Air Force accidents are due to fatigue, cost lives and billions of dollars. And now we can really start to create these, these systems that have been used in laboratory, but now at scale, you know, on the field, both for consumers and also for, uh, for the Department of Defense. Amazing. And I heard you're going to do something that should never be done and give us a live demo on stage. That's right. <laughs> so one of the things that uh, I thought was very interesting is that um, I went to a CIA conference and three different EEG companies go up there and they're like, we're not going to do a demo. EEG is so hard, it's so unreliable, it's so hard to do. And so I went up there and I was like, I'm going to do a demo. So same thing here. Uh, what I'm going to show off today is actually our, our initial system for detection of, of uh, fatigue. And really what it is, is I'm just going to put on these headphones. The best part about this is that instead of having to do this long setup process with alcohol and, and all these metal prongs, you just put them on like a normal pair of headphones. Now, I have a little bit longer hair than, than your average male, so I'm, I have to move my hair out of the way real quick. But essentially, this is all the setup that you need. And somebody who has short hair like yourself, you can just put it on, right? You got, you got it pulled back, so you're fine. <laughs> <laughs> you got it pulled back, so it's a little, yeah. But essentially, the other barrier to really making this technology work seamlessly is that it usually takes about 10 to 20 minutes of calibration. And so with our data set of close to 5,000 individuals, we've removed all calibration from all of our systems. So essentially, what you're going to see here is I'm going to hit start in just a second. And when I focus, you're going to see a line go up, representing my focus going high. And then when I relax, you're going to see a line go down, representing that I'm distracting myself. And this is the line that we use as people are out in the field, and we can track how their fatigue is, is, is being impacted and when they might be getting into an accident. So uh, I'm going to start this up. I'm going to start stop talking so that you know it's not any type of movement of mine that's, that's driving this. But essentially, when I focus, it'll go up. And when I relax, it will go down. OK, I'm going to start focusing. And then I'll just relax. 
And you can see very quickly in real time it starts to drop down. Right? Uh, this type of capacity and capability required a full head cap system in order to be able to do it at this level of resolution. Just to show you it's not a fluke, I'll do it one more time. I'll start focusing. And then I'll relax again. And what's really cool is we're going to have a, a booth here. So if you want to check it out yourself, you're welcome to drop by. Uh, you just put it on like a normal pair of headphone. It works out of the box, right? And so essentially what we've done is, is made EEG so seamless and so robust that you can now start to build technology on top of it uh, and use it like an everyday product. And so very soon you're going to start to see some of your favorite products coming out with this technology. And then also in safety and applications, uh, being able to build. Uh, to, re to really enable people to have the safety. And so, like I mentioned, earbuds, headphones, glasses, even helmets. Imagine that type of technology helping you detect if you have traumatic brain injuries, if you have Alzheimer's that's occurring, uh, and even just changing music tracks simply by thinking. Amazing. Francis, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Both of you. Please, check, check out the demo during the break. It's really amazing. You can try it yourself. So we've heard a lot about digital health. Now let's talk about AI for industry. Endless applications that we have industrial partners applying AI to. But something really exciting is happening. We're going beyond physical data. And together with NVIDIA, we partnered now to bring Omniverse to Edge Impulse so that we can start to work with virtual data, synthetic data, that is generated from a virtual world. And this is a real application with Pepsi, <clears throat> where we've built a Pepsi manufacturing line in a complete digital world on big NVIDIA GPUs in order to put photorealistic cameras into the simulation, gather full data sets, different lighting, different angles, different variations of cans, different defects, use Edge Impulse to build a real model, apply some of those foundational models we talked about earlier for object detection, and apply those models and deploy them back either to a physical device, right, a camera, or back into the virtual world. So we can actually use Omniverse for both synthetic data generation as well as model testing. And this opens up tons of possibilities for manufacturing facilities that are being designed, right? Manufacturing lines that are difficult or dangerous to reach oil and gas operations that might involve a helicopter to go gather data, right? Data collection is very hard. This solves lots of problems. So you're gonna hear a lot more about what we're doing with Omniverse in the future. I talked earlier about vision in industry. and This is actually really exciting. We start to get to a point where we found the ultimate combination of technologies together with our partner, Irnos, to build ultra-low power AI-enabled computer vision products. And our next generation reference design, it's a reference design. Um, all of our customers get access to the full design of this, all the software, all the electronics, the mechanicals. They can work with Irnos to even have these manufactured for themselves. And what we found is that by combining the latest ARM IP, Cortex-M55s, Ethos, HDR cameras, Together with very low power processing from Nordic, this accelerated ethos M55 from Alif, we're able to run the latest models from MobileNet, our own FOMO technology, NVIDIA Tau models, in real time at multi-year battery life with just the two cells that are in this box. So we're now able to do this 50% smaller with longer battery life. And this is only going to get more interesting, right? As we get silicon enhancements, we're going to be putting this into this type of camera design. So this is now going into mass usage across our customer base. We're seeing customers in manufacturing defects in valves, um, laundry quality monitoring, QR code and license plate reading. We recently tested this with a big customer in the field. We're able to capture over 80 mile per hour vehicle flybys, vehicle identification, license plate reading in real time, QR code detection in real time with this battery-powered camera. So lots more are going to come from this. Really exciting. 
And we have a very special customer for this called Conservation X. Conservation X is a world leader in nature conservation solutions. And this year, um, at the Edge AI Summit, they won product of the year for Consumer Edge products with their Sentinel AI camera based on this. And the solutions that they've been working on, I don't know if Sam has arrived yet. So one of their guys was flying in from Galapagos <laughs> Um, from installing these cameras in the field for the detection of species there, um, they're doing amazing things. Species detection, behavioral and de disease identification, IDing animals, and things like anomaly detection, right? Is an, an animal acting strangely? Is there a person in a national reserve where they shouldn't be? Is there a poacher, right? Nearby elephants. All of these kind of things we're able to now detect in real time in the field rather than going in and collecting an SD card six months afterwards from a camera trap. So really amazing application of this technology, again, in Tech for Good with nature conservation. This technology is getting deployed widely across logistics. So we're working with several customers in the logistics space for asset identification. What pallet is this, right? What box is this? Is it damaged? Fleet identification, right? What kind of vehicle drove into the warehouse yard? What was its license plate, right? Were the warehouse workers working safely around forklifts, right? How do we accelerate pallet identification and processing? How do we monitor safety more widely, right, in facilities? We're seeing lots of applications like this for low power AI computer vision. A great example of that is Ready Robotics. So our partner Ready, do I need to click for the video? Yes. Our partner Ready Robotics has now created an entire operating system for robotics automation. This is what they do. And what they've now done is they've developed pallet cell solutions, right? How do you design a pallet cell where a robot will process pallets, right? Automatically look for things like um, damage, and they do this with Omniverse, which is very cool. So this is, a, this is an Omniverse simulation of, of a pallet cell. I'm going to play that again, because it's pretty cool. They can design this entire pallet cell in Omniverse. And now they're applying Edge Impulse to do anomaly detection on these robots. So they can look at the motion, vibration, electrical current consumption, compressed air usage in this robot compared to the pallet cell simulation and detect when there's an anomaly in the robotic setup. So for safety, for efficiency, for damage, this is a big deal. We've recently started working with one of the world's largest elevator and escalator manufacturers, TK Elevator, the global leader in mobility solutions. They've started to apply AI in their innovations for elevators and escalators to improve safety, comfort, functionality, optimization, you name it. There's endless numbers of applications and these types of products. And this is only the start. And we're doing this with partners, right? At Edge Impulse, we don't do this alone, right? We always go to market with partners. Lexmark is one of our main partners in industrial manufacturing with their Lexmark Optra Edge solutions. And Optra Edge, series of industrial gateways, looks like this. Industrial gateways um, based on ARM and NVIDIA processing where they've developed an end-to-end -end solution, so from sensor all the way through to cloud, where they've integrated Edge Impulse capabilities. We are available for white label, integrated our capabilities into their solution so they can deal with mid-size and large end manufacturers, right? People that normally would not integrate an embedded model, right, with C++ into their own product. These are people that want to solve a problem on the factory floor. They can use this Optra Edge solution to do that, and this enables things like SKU identification. So this is an application from an actual Lexmark printer facility where you have to identify the quality of the SKUs coming off the manufacturing line. There's sometimes thousands of different SKU combinations, and we can do this automatically using AI vision. So we're going to hear more about this. We have Lexmark's CTO for their innovation unit. He's going to be up here talking about what they're doing with Optra Edge. We're now doing this in IoT. So we're announcing a partnership with Particle. Particle's a leading manufacturer of 
modules, gateways, tracker devices, that is an end-to-end -end IoT service, right? They're able to do everything from data collection to deployment, management of these devices, and now they're integrating AI into their solutions. So we can now run Edge Impulse directly from our deployment stage on any particle module and going forward on things like gateways and trackers. And today, that's an export, right? We're exporting a particle package that goes on this, like we do with IAR. In the future, we're gonna be doing this directly into over-the-air update. And a great customer case that they're working on right now involves monitoring energy consumption fluctuations from trash compactors. So trash compactors in the field, depending on how their energy, con energy consumption pattern looks like, we can detect whether that trash compactor is full or not. So not requiring complex vision solutions, but just from current, and save a lot of fuel and logistics um, from the trash companies. So this is something we're working on today. Again, we work with partners. We're an ecosystem, right? It's really an ecosystem that's required to make these types of solutions come to market. And we're completely relaunching our partner program. We're now in the mode of enterprise business and getting there successfully together. And that means we're gonna be working with strategic partners, deploying massive resources from our side and from our partner's side to make that happen. With solution builders, right? People who have solutions in market that we sell together with, and with technology providers, right? If you wanna integrate with Edge Impulse with your technology, you'll be able to do that and we'll make that very easy. I already talked about our partnership with NVIDIA. We're also doing this in a big strategic way with Nordic. So many of the solutions I've shown today are based on Nordic low power SOCs. Um, we're now announcing that we will be supporting all Nordic hardware forever. Every single Nordic part that's released, including the new Atlazzo ML accelerators that were recently announced. So you can look forward to a lot more extremely low power solutions together with Nordic. We're doing the same with SIs. So we have a new partnership with Capgemini where we're working together on the big accounts, Fortune 100 customers, um, dozens of engineers in parallel on large projects to deploy things like cat and dog trackers, automatic pet feeders, very high volume consumer products that you need big engineering resources for. So again, we don't do it alone, we do it with our strategic partners. So three things I want you to take away from Imagine this year. Again, 2023 is the year we really went from hype to business. And we're doing it as an ecosystem, right? So let's work together to make these customers successful. Two, together with NVIDIA, we're enabling customers to train the most advanced models in the world, right? And we're doing it on production-optimized hardware. So now we're opening this up to all the hardware that high-volume products are shipping in market. And three, leading companies in health and industry are applying AI right now. This is the time to start, right? If your organization, those of you in person here watching us, we have over 3,000 um, people watching us live around the world. This is the time to start investing in AI and figuring out how to apply it to your data, right? Solve your problems and really gain the benefits that you've seen here.